Hi everybody, we are back with the or uh, with part two, I should say, of the five by six mini album. And we're gonna create our pages. But before we um, do that, what I want to share with you is you only need three sheets of the eight and a half by eleven to create all six pages. So get yourself a sheet of eight and a half by eleven, put it in your cutter and cut it at four and a quarter. That's going to give you two pages from one sheet. Okay, just thought I'd throw that out there. But what you're going to need is six of these. Six of these measure eleven by four and a quarter. You're going to line it up at the eleven inch mark and score it at five and a half. You're going to do that to all six sheets, okay, all six of your pieces. Set that aside. You're also going to need um, paper shims. Now, these measure um, one inch by four and three eighth inch. You're going to line them up. You need six of those. You're going to line them up in your scoreboard and you're going to score those at a half inch. So do that to all six of your shims, all six of your pages. Set your scoreboard aside and this is how you're going to put it together. So you want to fold on the score line. Just make sure you line up your page really well here and then fold it up. And then this is your shim. I'm going to fold that on its score line. And basically, you are going to connect this piece here to this piece here with this paper shim to form your page. Then you'll have a pocket on this side, and then this side goes into your mini album. Okay? So on my shims, on the ends, you could do it on the inside or the outside, that's up to you. Some people put it on the outside and they try to line it up really well and then close this down and do it that way. I just put my shims on the outside. I'm using the 3 8 inch score tape again. And I'm gonna put a piece on the inside here, staying away from my score line, getting close but not, not on it or over it. Okay, so I have my open pieces at the top here. I'm just going to pull off one piece of tape. Okay, now before I show you how to put this together, which is um, an easy way that I learned how. Just so you know, this shim is a little bit wider than the paper. And that's okay, I did that for a reason because I want it to allow a little bit of leg room in case I didn't get it on, you know, completely even. I'd rather have a little bit more that I need to trim off than not have enough. So I'm just gonna kind of bend it like this. I'm gonna keep my tape on this side and I'm basically gonna slide it underneath in here and butt the page up against the score line just like that and then the piece that I peeled off I'm just gonna fold right down flip it over flip my tab up pull off the tape and as you can see it's still open here on this end make sure my flap is down and press it down and I'm going to run my bone folder over it. And if you see, you have a little bit left over on this edge and a little bit left over on this edge. So I just pop the page open so you can see it here, that little tiny piece. I'm just going to trim that right off. Same thing on this side. Pop the page open. There's a little bit hanging over there. I'm going to trim that right off. Okay. You're going to do that to all six of your pages. You're going to create six of these. And then the shim I usually keep at the bottom of my page. You don't have to. It's just easier for me that way. 
Now the page, the mat you're going to need to cover your pages, those are going to measure five and three eighths inch by four and one eighth. So four and one eighth across, five and three eighth inches from top to bottom. And I'm going to use a little bit of liquid glue. This part I like to stand up for because when I sit down I don't tend to get it on as well. And this is all about eyeballing when you put it on your page. If you stand up above it, you can see it much, you know, better from above. And then just press it down. And those measurements basically give you a 1 8 inch border of cardstock that you can see through all the way around. And then I'm going to flip it and put on my piece here. And what I did was I went ahead and made all six of my pages, well I made all five off camera and then left the last one here for us to do together just to save some time. camera okay and all you're going to do that to all of them so then once you have all six of your pages put together and covered we're going to put them in our album okay so I'm going to start with the first page let me put my pin in my glue so it doesn't dry up here okay I'm going to start putting on my first page here on this flap. When I put them on the flap, I only take off one side of the tape at a time. It's just easier for me to get it on. Completely up to you what you want to do. But I'm going to peel off this side of my tape first. I'm going to leave the, the other tape stuff on there. Okay, so this side's going to go on the album. This side is my pocket. I'm going to try and do it this way so y'all can see what I mean. I left the paper on here, pulled it off here, stand it straight up, and just kind of push it down, straight down. Now before I adhere anything, I want to flap it open to make sure that's going to be straight and press down. Now. I still have one side that's not adhered here. That's where my tweezers come in. I'm going to kind of get it in there and pull that paper off of my tape and press down. Okay, so we have one page on. Do the same thing. Pull the tape off on this side. And I'll do it this way for the camera. Okay, this is the side that's going to go on my spine. Straight up and down my flap is. Line up my page. Press down so it's tight against the spine. And then I'm going to fold it down to make sure it's even with this page. On the top and bottom, you want to make sure it's even, not that it's wonky. <laughs> and then push down. Open it back up. Stick my tweezers in here. Very carefully peel off that tape. The paper from the tape, I should say. Oh, I have to sit down for this part because I don't have my, I have my glasses on, but there we go. Peeling that off and pushing down on that. Our second page is on. We'll do the same thing. Make sure it's straight up and down. Line up my page. Push down. Close it, or 
lay it down, make sure these are even, top and bottom, and then push down. Flip it back. Peel that tape paper off. Sometimes it's hard, there we go. Sometimes it's hard to snag. That's why these, these tweezers come in so handy. And then press down. Okay. Pull one side off. Put my page on. Press down. Open it, make sure it's even, top and bottom, and then push down. The only thing that I did not do the whole thing ahead of time is our kind of waterfall flip pages. I want to do all of that with you on camera so you can see that from start to finish every page. Just makes it easier if you don't cover it with your mats first. Okay, I'm going to pull this side up. We almost have them all on. Line it up, push down, make sure it's even with those, and press. Flipping it back. Pull that out and press that down. Okay, that leaves our pocket on this side. Push down on this one. Make sure it's even. Oh, that one came right out. And press down. Okay. So all of our pages are in. And you can see there's a quarter inch spine piece in between each page. So that gives you enough if you want to put some, if you can see here, you want to put some dimensional stickers in. Like this has some 3D dimension. You have plenty of room to do that, okay? And then it'll close really nice for you. It won't close, you know, where it's still open like this. It closes pretty decent. If you don't decorate it like too puffy on both sides, it gives you that quarter inch section. Okay, now for these here, these pull out pages, we're gonna create those. I went ahead and did Five of mine are ready, but we're going to do one together so you can see how to make them. Okay, your cardstock piece that you're going to need for your pullout page measures five and a quarter by three and a half. And then you're going to create your tab on this first before you mat it. So what I did was I used um, my scallop circle punch, punched out a circle. And then what I did was I went in between two scallops, cut straight across. Then I flipped these together and line them up. Line up all the scallops. Okay. And if you turn it over, you see you have some of that piece left over there. Just one ahead and trim that off. Just so that they're nice and flush with each other. Now, when I add my tabs, I add them so that there's one here, one here. It kind of goes all the way down the line. So this is going to be my last piece. I'm going to want to put my tab on the edge down here. 
in that way they're all pretty nice and even. I'm going to get my glue. Yeah, I mean, y'all can do them however you want. This is just how I did mine. And pop that on there. Oh. Okay, flip it around. I kind of like to do a double tab, double piece here. I'm going to use my tweezer, line up my scallops. This just makes your pull tab nice and thick and it's not real flimsy so when people are constantly pulling on it, it doesn't tear. That's why I put one on each side. Okay, so now that that's done, we're going to cover our page. This is the bottom, how it's going to lay in here. See how that tag's there? Real nice. Okay, so this is the bottom. I'm going to want to put, I think, this side on here first. Yeah. Okay. Some glue. You can create your tabs with, you know, a lot of different punches. You can do like, um, you don't have to do, use a scallop circle. You can use regular circles. You can just cut one inch squares with your, you know, if you don't have punches, you can just cut a one inch square piece, say from your, from your um, cutter. Okay, well maybe, we'll do an inch and a half, and then you can just bend it like this, fold it over, you know what I mean, put glue on this side and this side, and then fold it over onto your paper, and you have yourself a pull tab. So you don't necessarily need punches, that's just a fancy way to do it. Um, you can just cut them out of a piece of paper and do it that way. You don't have to run out and buy punches if you don't you know, have that in your budget. Okay, so we finished that first side. We're going to flip it and finish this side. I think I have a video on how to create some tabs. I'll post a link below to that so you guys can check that out and maybe I'll do another video coming up soon where you know I'll make some more tabs out of different things give you guys some ideas of you know you don't have to run out and buy all these tools if you don't need to you can just use what you have Okay, so on here, you guys see I used my white jelly roll pen and just kind of made little circles on my scallops just to kind of bring in some color to it. So I'm going to do that here. I'm going to let that dry a little bit. And then I'm going to show you open our album back up. This is our first page. So we have our first pull out mat. Okay, fits right nice in the pocket. Lined up flush with there. And then you have that nice tab you can pull on. Fit in our second one. And third. The fourth one, the fifth one, okay, so see how they lay nice in the album too, on this side and this side. Now all we need is this last one here, so I'm going to flip that, should be dry, make my circles on this side. Let that dry a little bit. 
And in the meantime, we're going to create our pocket for the back. And then we will do our flip pages with our magnets and ribbon. Okay, so I have this all prepared pretty much. These are the flip pages and my scallops and my magnet, which is kind of sticking to my paper clip there, which is good. Okay, here we go. Here is the back pocket piece. Okay, so for your, let me set this aside. For your cardstock to create the pocket, you want your piece to measure five and seven eight long by three and a half. You're gonna get out your scoreboard and you're gonna line it up and you're gonna score a half inch on this side. Flip it. Score a half inch on the opposite side and then score a half inch on this side. Don't score on this side because this is the top of your pocket. So you're going to fold up your score lines. And get out your scissors look like this. Two flaps on the side, one on the bottom, and you're going to have these little square pieces here. And you just kind of want to angle your cut in a little bit and take those corners out. Okay. Fold up your sides. Get yourself, sorry, my arm went right across the camera. Get yourself a little bit of glue. Fold in your sides. Put a little bit of glue down here on this part. A little bit on this part. And close up the bottom piece. If you're doing liquid glue, you want to kind of hold that for a minute. score lines a little wonky right there there we go <laughs> okay push down on this and then the piece that you're going to use to cover your pocket that measures four and three quarter inches across two and seven eighths high same thing I'm going to use some liquid glue on it my pocket and that size gives you one eighth inch border of the craft card stock put my scoreboard aside for a minute make sure this is on real nice get my album out this is for the back page I'm gonna take some liquid glue and add it to these tabs. Bottom and both sides. Okay, and we're going to line it up and put it in our album. Okay, I'm going to push down on that really well. my bone folder over it. Okay, we have just created our back pocket and I did already cut three cutouts from the paper collection that are going to fit really nice inside this back pocket. And then I will definitely decorate the pocket up, but I'm going to do that off camera. 
Okay, our last pull out should be dry. Yep, I'm gonna put that in. So that's all our pull outs. Those are all finished. Now we're gonna do the flip, um, you can call it a flip. It's not really a waterfall because the waterfalls I think you pull on. So it's just kind of like a little flip page. We have a magnet inside here. I'm gonna show you how to put that on, the ribbon, and then these all just flip up for more photos. Now this piece here, this is a smaller piece than your flaps up here. Okay, so this piece, we're gonna call it the purple piece, that measures three and a half by three and a half, and then the mat that's gonna go on this measures three and three eighths by three and three eighths inch. And you can go ahead and mat that piece. ahead of time and set it aside because you're not going to need it for a little while. Okay, so let's set that one aside. Now we're going to create our flaps. So let me move this album here. Your cardstock flap pieces. Okay, these measure four and a half by three and a half, and you're gonna need four of them, okay? And you're gonna line them up in your scoreboard and you're gonna score at the four inch mark on all four. So one, two, line up, score at four inches, three, and four. And I pretty much think we're done with the scoreboard today. So you're going to want to fold your flap down. Now I don't mat these at this point yet because for some reason it's just easier for me to mat them afterward with having to line them up on the album itself. So this half inch flap, I'm gonna keep folded. You can open it back up, but the piece that folds down, that's where you're gonna put tape. And I'm gonna use some more score tape. So we got one, two, Three, and four. Okay, let me run my bone folder over that really good. Make sure that tape's nice and secure. Now at this point, I usually kind of do this, line up the flaps like that. Turn it around, and I'm going to open up my album, and I lay them here so that I can see how far I have to come down with my first flap. So I would say a good quarter of an inch. I'm going to leave that here, peel the tape off. Make sure the sides, no tape hanging out. I'm gonna line it up. You want to make sure it's centered here, quarter of an inch down from the top of your page. Okay, that looks pretty good. 
and you can press down. Now, flip this flap up. You're going to take your next page, take the tape off, fold it back down, and you're going to butt this part up against the flap here. And then fold this down first before you push on it and make sure these are nice and even when they close. And then push down on this flap. Okay. Flip this one open. Same thing here. Peel your tape off if you have any excess hanging out on the sides. You want to push that in. Fold this back down. Take the top part of this page butt it right up against, don't leave any gap, right up against that flap there. But before you press down, close your book and make sure this is all lined up nicely and none of your pages are uneven or wonky. And push down. Open this one. This is our last flap. Peel this off. Make sure your tape's tucked in. Close this down, butt this piece up against here. And make sure you close it. Make sure those pages look pretty even. Nice and even before you press down. Okay, so there's our flip pages. And then this page is our underneath page and we're going to butt this right up against there and that way it's underneath and it's hidden but before we do that we want to add this piece of ribbon underneath okay so I'm just going to take a little bit of this score tape And add it to the back of this. Hold on. There we go. Okay. Peel this up. This is the bottom part of my page. I'm gonna lay this ribbon right here. A little piece there. You can run your bone folder over that. And then I'll just take my double-sided ATG because I don't feel like peeling off all that tape on the score tape. Okay, flip it around and butt it right up against and press down. Okay, so that's nice and secure. Basically this is our ribbon that's going to close up our album. So you see where this is ending right here? This flip page, this paper here is going to be my first paper on here, but I'm going to need to put one of these magnets underneath before I put my paper on. So, let's do this first. We'll make our little thing with our scallop circles and then we'll put our magnet on our paper. Okay, so first things first, we have to put the magnet, one of the magnets, in the center, if I can pick it up of this scallop circle. So peel them up. I use a little bit of liquid glue here. I'm gonna glue that magnet on. Whoop. Try and center it as best you can. I mean, it doesn't really matter, you're not gonna see it, but I try to center as best I can. 
and then I'm going to put my ribbon in here. Okay, so down at the bottom here, I'm just going to add a little bit of hot glue. And pop my ribbon right on there like that. Okay, so you can see on this side, I have the ribbon, the magnet. I'm going to lay. Sorry about that, had to stop my camera for a second. So, again, I have the ribbon, the magnet, I'm going to lay it down. Going to pick up my other magnet, just going to kind of flap this back, lay that down, and see where it lands. Looks like right about there. So, the magnet's already on this side. I'm going to add a little glue to my magnet, press this back down, and kind of push. And that way, it, it leaves an imprint of the glue on here. So then I just take that back off on this side. And lay the magnet back down, because that's where I know exactly where it want, it's going to go. Okay. And then this side, I want to finish this off with this scallop. So I'm going to take this scallop circle. And I'm going to add hot glue to it and line it up on the top. Make sure I line up my scallop circles there and really push down while that magnet's drying. Okay, so it's going to look like this once you push it together. The magnet's inside this scallop. Okay, so you can't see it. And then I have this really cute flower piece I'm going to put on here. I, I punched this out with one of my um, smaller scallop punches from the pattern paper here. And I'm just going to back that up with a little bit of foam tape. Put that on there and then peel this off and flip it back over. I'm going to try to center as best I can and press it down. And then this side, I did do my white jelly roll pen all the way around the scallop on the cardstock. There's nothing on this side except the white jelly roll pen itself and you can actually see the magnet through the paper in there. And that's okay because that's already, you know, that side you don't really see that often until somebody flops it open. But I will go through and do the white jelly roll pen. I'm not going to do that right now for camera's sake because we want to get the mats on this. So my first mat here, what I like to do is I like to put a little bit of glue on top of the magnet. And then I'm going to put it on my cardstock, my mats. And I don't remember if I gave you guys the mat size or not. But the mat size for the flip pages, these all measure three and three. Oh, oh my gosh. Three and, sorry guys, I bumped my camera. Three and three eight. Let me lay this down first before the glue dries and then I'll give you the measurements. Okay. Um, flip pages, mats. Three and three eight wide, three and seven eight high. Okay, so that's the measurement for all of these. Three and three eight inches. And I'm gonna push down and as you can see here, that is our flip page. So I'm going to flip this open and glue these on. Three and three eighths wide and three and seven eighths high. I 
love these flip pages because it gives you more real estate for photos and journaling in a small space. So you can get a lot more photos on. So I do make these often. You can also make flip pages on your actual pages. I just wanted to share this with you. Okay, so now I am going to end up covering all of these. I'm not going to do it right now on camera. Okay, but that's my pattern. And once those are on, that closes up nicely. So that's your flip page. All of our pages are put together. Our back pocket. We have our ribbon closure, which once you're done, you want to close it up. And then there is extra ribbon, just so you know. Once you have it all decorated the way you like, just go ahead and trim you know, your ribbon off because you have a little bit of extra. And then decorate your front cover, which I'm going to do. And then I'll be back to share how the album um, turned out, how it's done decorating. And I'll share that with you in a project share later. So thank you guys so much for watching. I, I hope I did an okay job for you. If you have any questions, let me know. And if you create one, I would love to see it. Let me know. And I'll come over and watch your video or check out your photo, whatever you want to do. And as always, have fun creating yours. Thanks for watching. Take care and happy crafting. Hey everybody, I'm back with the finished decorated album and I did it extremely similar to my first one this one was I was made for sunny days this one is live life in full bloom and I also made a tassel similar to this one the only real difference is I put a crocheted flower on the top of this one and that one doesn't have it I never realized I had those in my stash and I found them so I thought it would look cute to put one on. So that's the front cover, has the same closure in the back of course, because we made this together. You guys have seen that. Um, my flip pages are all fully covered. Okay. And again, all of my, um, let me get a, photo out here. Um, I don't have a photo. Let's just use a piece of chipboard. All of my embellishments are put on so that photos will slide behind. This says birds are chirping. And basically what I did was I took some stickers from the sticker sheet and just made my own embellishments. Like here I had a little sticker from there and then I punched out some hearts. Um, with the ladybug and over here I have the sentiment spring okay and you all saw the pull outs because we made those together and then the sun is shining and then here's the sun this was actually a really big sticker and I have half of it left over here and I just cut it in half and and put it on the top of the page to make it look like the sun is, you know, shot in on the page. Put some flowers together here. Photo slides behind. And then the happy sentiment. And warm air, sunshine. And then here I fussy cut a little boot out of the paper. And I put the flower sticker there. And there's a white cardstock here with a flower from the sticker collection. Okay. Then this is a banner piece from the sticker collection. I put a white heart up here, made this butterfly from a Martha Stewart punch, the little one from a punch as well, photo slides behind. And then over here it says butterfly kisses. Oops, just bumped that paper. And then the last page here, I have a watering can that I backed up on cardstock and then cut that out. That was a sticker from the collection. And this is also 
two stickers from the collection. Spring is in the air, and I did the bicycle here on the pocket. I thought that was kind of cute. So that's it, guys. That's how it's decorated. This one is for sale as well as this one in my eBay, which I will post a link below that. And I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial, and I hope you have fun creating yours. If you make one this size, I would love to see it. Let me know. Post some comments below this video, and I'll head over to your channel and check it out. Thanks so much for watching. If you have any questions, let me know. Take care, and happy crafting.